All right. Hello, everyone out there, and welcome to Celebrating Black History Month, where today we're spotlighting the SNABV, or the Student National Association of Black Veterinarians. My name is Kayla Jackson. I'm going to be your host today. I hold a few roles. I am the SAVMA Cultural Outreach Officer, as well as a part of the Diversity Committee, and I'm also the membership chair for SNABB. For me, I went to undergrad at UC Santa Barbara and finished my veterinary prerequisites at Pierce College. And for those that don't know, I did mention SAVMA. SAVMA is essentially our student government here at Ross. As a part of your tuition here at Ross, you're an automatically a member of SAVMA. SAVMA has many great benefits, such as you get access to journals, as well as insurance for when you go on your externships. And overall, we're here to be a voice of the students. So as cultural outreach officer, I'm here to make sure that multiple cultures are represented in the decisions that are made where student government is involved. So along with myself, I have Thaddeus Chapman and Khadija Evans here who are also SNABB members and I'll go ahead and have them introduce themselves. If Thaddeus, you wanna kick us off? Yes, my name is Thaddeus Chapman. I am the current uh, chapter president here at Ross University. I did my undergrad at Prairie View a and University, which is a historically black college and university in the state of Texas. Uh, I grew up in Dallas um, and that's where I currently reside as well. Um, I'm one of the original charter members here for uh, SNABV. We chartered on June 23rd of 2020 and I was originally uh, Kayla's position. I was the membership chair. And with my current position being a chapter president, I'm just a liaison to the national headquarters for SNABV, just making sure that we have a good open communication from the national headquarters to the chapter as well, and just making sure that they are aware of all the activities that we are doing. Uh, we were originally planning on meeting uh, this year for Juneteenth, June, uh, which is on, I believe it's going to be on the 17th of this year to at the national headquarters for a meeting. And for you guys who do not know what Juneteenth is, Juneteenth is just a commemoration of the end of slavery in the United States. It is also known as the Emancipation Day, Freedom Day, Jubilee Day, or the Juneteenth Independence Day, or Black Independence Day. Although the Emancipation Proclamation came two and a half years earlier on January 1st in 1863, Many slave owners continued to hold people captive, so Juneteenth became a symbolic date for African-American freedom. And so with all of that, we are still just trying to see if uh, we are able to have our um, national headquarters meeting this year. But due to COVID, everything is always being pushed back. So hopefully we can actually meet this year in June. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Khadija, how about you? Hi, my name is Khadija Evans. I am currently a fifth semester student at Ross University. I'm also the vice president for SNABB. Um, I've been vice president since second semester. Um, my interest in the club actually started outside of school and I just had this lingering need to facilitate a um, undergraduate students to be where we are today. Um, and so currently as vice president, what I do is I work within the network of Ross and um, I help organize events. Um, and if you're actually following us at RUSVM underscore SNABB uh, on Instagram, we highlight a lot of our events, um, fundraising uh, items, as well as um, um, Currently, we are highlighting prominent Black veterinarians within the community as part of the Health and Wellness Black History Month initiative. Um, for instance, we have Curtsy L. Kurd featured on our um, Instagram page, who was the first Black person to graduate from Cornell Veterinary School. Um, we also will be highlighting some events um, at Shiggity Shack. Uh, some of the, uh, we'll be having a trivia night featuring around some Black History Month questions. Um, we have some fun uh, music 
plan as well. So if you guys are interested, you should follow our page to get some hints to some of the questions coming up. If you guys look on your screen, we have a few trivia questions, just a little preview of what to expect at trivia night. And looks like in the chat, I've got a few correct answers. Good job. Um, so along with SNABV, so some of the other initiatives that we have going on, um, Thaddeus, can you tell us a little bit more about the mentorship program? Yes. So with the mentorship program, we are connecting undergraduate students and we're basically offering them an opportunity for mentorship uh, and words of encouragement. We usually reach out to schools that we went to to speak. Also, we do reach out to schools that uh, we didn't attend. So I do know that we have spoken to my university. We have spoken to s several other members universities as well. Uh, you don't, we don't only reach out to ours. So you guys, if you guys have any questions, feel free just to message us through our social medias and myself or one of the other officers will get back to you to answer any questions about SNABV or Ross University itself. And how about mentorship for our current members? So uh, with mentorship for our current members, we usually reach out to Ross alum. Uh, we have like a little bit of a small database of all the alumni, uh, uh, predominantly black who uh, went to Ross and we usually try to reach out to them because a lot of the Ross uh, alumni alumni they all are very really diverse inside their fields we have some that work inside the government we have some that are overseas that work for SeaWorld in Dubai I believe we have uh, others too we have Dr. Nat here who's here with us uh, who works here uh, so we just basically just have a really really well diverse field of Ross alumni that we usually just try to speak to. Dived into some of the SNABB activities and what we do. Let's talk about ourselves a little bit. So Khadija, tell me a little bit more about your background, where you're from and how you got here. So I went to Texas A&M and one of the things that I found kind of interesting is that outside of a more agricultural community, it's actually very hard to get large animal experience, especially if you live in an urban area. So for me, um, my journey through vet school was just trying new things and seeing how I could get meet all the requirements to get to vet school. Um, I personally had to hear a lot of no's and um, I faced a lot of rejection in order to get here. Um, however, I will tell you that that is a part of life and it's particularly important if you want to get to be where you want to be. So um, for me, one of the things that I always tell undergraduate students is to never be afraid of rejection and never be afraid of making a mistake. Um, because with that rejection, all you as many no's as you hear, you could hear the best yeses. And as many mistakes as you make, you can learn from them and become the best doctor. So that was pretty much my undergraduate experience. Lots of rejections, lots of mistakes. <laughs> Absolutely. I think we've all heard the no's. You're definitely going to hear more no's than yeses. But when you hear that yes, it feels real good. <laughs> the best yes. Yeah. Thaddeus, how about you? So my personal journey, like I said earlier, I went to Prairie View A&M University, which is a historically black college university. We we're actually 45 minutes away from Texas A&M. So if we actually needed anything, we would go to A&M and like try to shadow their vets. Um, but upon coming to Ross and like applying, I heard a lot of no's as well uh, from other universities. Sometimes I didn't even hear anything from the other schools. So I was like, I take that as a no as well. <laughs> and do not give up when you hear that um, or don't get anything because still keep going. But when I came down to Ross, it was really, really just a broad field because I realized that it was really diverse, like from the staff, the student body, the professors that we all have. Um, I was actually just really happy just because just to see that Ross was actually one of the most diverse vet schools that I've seen. Mind you, I've had visited other vet school campuses as well, but uh, Ross has just been by far the most diverse that I've seen. Definitely, and kind of touching on that diversity of things, it's a pretty well-known statistic out there that the vet field is predominantly white. And the most recent statistics show that, or the Bureau of Labor 
um, statistics shows that only 1.2% of veterinarians are black. So it's definitely important to see that representation. Um, so to kind of speak to that, you guys feel, and another important aspect is community. Um, do you think you get that here at Ross? I'll comment on that. Um, I think what SNABV provides and even the LVMA provides is a sort of community for people of color. Um, I think we actually do a very good job of at least making sure that people within our small group or community feels welcome, feels important and feels heard that all of our issues are addressed while we're here. So I think it's it's more important that we actually have that community and we branch out and welcome other people to our community so that they feel the same. It's perfect, definitely. I think it's, um, it's definitely unique here. Um, what are some things, and Thaddeus, I'll throw this to you first. What are some things you wish you knew coming into vet school? Woo. <laughs> so one of the things that I wish that I knew before coming to vet school was that Ross was, or vet school in general, was just going to be a challenging journey. Um, to be honest, I'm still, I'm shocked I'm still here <laughs> just because of how challenging and just how hard vet school is. Uh, I wish I knew um, work a good or a better work-life balance, just be just to be able to balance like having a, a good stable mental health, um, a social life, because, you know, like we're all going through things, um, especially like in a diverse uh, around the world right now, just because everything's just out of order and out of the whack. But usually like uh, if I'm do dealing with something like with some mental health issues or like some uh, if I need help uh, with some thing, I usually just reach out to the counseling services. Uh, Miss Aaliyah, who's here at Ross, she's actually a great uh, person to communicate to. I talk to some of the um, my friends that are in uh, SNABV as well, because sometimes they're going through the same thing I'm going through. But and you just sometimes just need some advice from uh, somebody who, who looks just like you or around you that's that knows how to tackle certain situations. Or sometimes if I just want to have a me day, I like to play video games and watch anime. So <laughs> that's a lot of the things that I like to do for myself just to keep myself sane because vet school can get you <laughs> can get you can get really hard. Can get really, really hard. Definitely. I mean, and we're in an accelerated program. So our breaks in between are short and sweet. Um, Kanisha, what are some of your de-stressing <laughs> activities or what do you like to do to kind of break that up a bit? Actually, um, because we're on an island, the beach is everywhere, right? <laughs> so the, <laughs> I like to utilize the beach as one of my uh, relaxation centers. But yeah, I, I think what Thaddeus said is actually very important. We do need to prioritize our mental health um, before in any graduate program, really. You should prioritize your mental health. Um, one of the things that SNABB does that um, I'm very proud of is that we kind of organize um, counseling, uh, group counseling for our members to to address some of the problems that we face on campus, as well as some personal issues that one might have, but the group will actually share. So I think that's something that is should definitely be highlighted. Um, additionally, we do have a great resources in terms of medication, but I, I do believe that I could have been better prepared <laughs> in terms of shipping some things down to island. So um, yeah, those are just some things that if you do go to Ross, you'll have to look forward to just being a little more prepared, a little more uh, focused, but yeah. Definitely, it's, it's an adjustment for sure. Yes. So at this time, I definitely want to bring in our faculty into the conversation. We have Dr. Ragland, who is our SNABV advisor, as well as Dr. Navaretti, who is our Ross's brand new assistant dean of DEI. Welcome, guys. Um, if Dr. Nat, we'll start with you if you want to introduce yourself. Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Dr. Natalie Ragland. I have a, a great privilege of being a Ross grad and I graduated in 2011. 
And I also was a SNABB mentor before um, coming to Island. I just started here about a year ago, almost a year as a faculty position. So I'm an assistant professor of biomedical sciences, and I am also a former vet prepper, and I also teach vet prep. And so that is um, kind of my uh, my introduction. And I and I really enjoy, you know, being this uh, faculty liaison for this group. It is a, a privilege. It's an opportunity for me to pay it forward. And, um, you know, my experiencing, you know, just having just a full circle moment, you know, brings a lot of um, insight and a lot of reflective moments in my life. Yes. And we love having you here. So thank you. And Dr. Navaretti, congrats on your new position. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so I am the new Assistant Dean of Diversity, Inclusion and Equity. And I'm really, really glad that Ross is focusing and is having all this energy to bring on, uh, to bring the discussion on this very important topic. So I'm, I'm very thankful for the invitation and I'm so glad that we are having these conversations today. Yes, so are we. It's definitely um, nice to see Ross moving in this direction. Now, Dr. Raglo, I know you were a student here. What are some of the differences you see between when you were a student here to today? Oh, my. Um, <laughs> it's too many to count. But yeah. one one thing I did notice is when I was, when I was a student, I came with about, um, you know, I had a smaller cohort in vet prep when I was enrolled in first semester, uh, my, the cohort that I was joining was about 120 of us total. And I think it was m myself and two other um, individuals of color, so um, of, uh, of African American descent. And so we were, you know, the three of us were kind of um, representing that, you know, um, that, that community in my first semester. And then, you know, total, I would say there was probably about 12 or 13 maybe students within the entire program that were African-American. And so the diversity pool in general was not as robust as it is today. And so that was a welcome um, advantage. And just looking at the, the picture of the students like, sitting by the raw sign, I mean, you can just see uh, just the changes that have happened you know, over the last over 12, 10 years ago. And it, it definitely speaks to the push that, you know, uh, Ross is making in, in highlighting the fact that, you know, DEI needs to be incorporated into our program globally, um, not just not just a word, but actually a movement. And so I think that is what we're doing. And, you know, just the, the, the stats alone, you know, where, you know, African-Americans still represent about 2.9% of the population of students. And so when you think about that, as you become a, a um, you, you move into the world, you know, in clinics, your clinical year, you may be the only one, right? And, and, your, and then your first job, you may be the only one. And so being able to um, ha have representation, I think prevents a lot of the isolation that you do see with some of the uh, student populations. Definitely. Um, and just to kind of add to that, um, and Dr. Navaretti, please jump in. What are some of the, um, challenges that people of color face when they out in the industry. So when we leave here, when we leave Ross, we leave clinics, what are some of kind of the top challenges that you you've seen or have heard um, students running into? So in terms of challenges, I think that representation, right? So we briefly touch on it um, as the students were sharing their experiences is that there is not a lot of representation out there. So there, is, there are no veterinarians that look like our students and there is no representation of the actual demography of uh, the population uh, represented in our veterinary community. So I think that is one of the biggest challenge uh, to uh, find people that is, you know, like looking, that looks like you, that is uh, having the same cultural background, that it has the same race, that has the same religion. So uh, that I think is a, a challenge that needs to be tackled by the universities and especially by the veterinary programs out there. Yes, definitely. And what are, um, so, you know, I know there was a story Thaddeus 
had told me previously that he said he was he was 23 when he met his first black veterinarian and correct me if i'm wrong that is so as we work with him (laughs) yeah yeah so it makes it a lot harder for students or even undergrad students to want to pursue a career in this field when you don't see yourself actively in it. And uh, I'll kind of pose this to Dr. Navaretti. So what are some of the things that Ross is doing? Or what what does the future look like for in DEI as far as Ross is concerned? Yeah, so um, there, there is a history uh, for it. So it's nothing really, I mean, it's, it's new, but it's something that Ross has been working for uh, some years already. So six years ago, Um, the diversity committee was pulled together. And then in 2020, um, basically the dean called to a task force on social justice and uh, racial justice. And in that task force, there were some um, strategic objectives that were delivered at the end of 2021. So these are very recent. And they are basically tackling uh, some of these challenges, right? And at different levels. So one could be um, the to strengthen the DI in the curriculum and the academics. The other one is to build foundational DI structure, uh, but not just for the students, but for the whole uh, Ross community. And the one I want to uh, really focus on right now is to improve the equity and inclusion uh, in the student experience because there, I think Ross has had a unique or holistic approach in terms of admissions, and it has strengthened uh, the diversity, including, you know, like race, ethnicity, gender, uh, over the past few years. And in particular, our understanding of the varied and non-traditional pathways that students can have in their educational experiences, even in their pre-veterinary, um, so even before attending to the vet school, right? So. We are not just looking um, at an enrolled student. We have basically dissected the application to the admission pathway that is showing that this is also uh, remaining strong in terms of diversity. So one example um, is that our January 22 uh, enrollment is um, 37% of students identifying themselves as from an ethnic uh, minority. Uh, so that is uh, different to what you get to see in other veterinary colleges. So that is it's very interesting too. And then I think uh, Ross is also trying to improve uh, the process of providing a supportive environment. So we are um, kind of understanding what it means, improving it and continuing to monitor and basically strengthen these admission processes to support uh, DEI. Perfect. Yes, definitely. And it's crucial. I mean, that is, if you could kind of touch on this, you said since you started as vet prep in a semester or two before Khadija and I, I mean, just in the short amount of time, I mean, I know we're all fifth semester students, but what have you seen from a student perspective? Okay, so when I first started here and vet prep, uh, it was around COVID times too, so that made it more difficult than it needed to be. (laughs) But uh, around the time when I started, it was a big difference. uh, And that was literally just about a year ago, just about. Um, The cultures changed, shifted, because I remember when I started in my vet prep class, it was about at least five or six of us. And now it was like, I look, uh, uh, six black students, sorry. And now I was like, I actually have an entire class program with um, a a lot of black students. I'm like, I feel like I'm in in a safe environment. I feel like I'm in a safe space. I feel like if I have any questions, I don't have to be really hesitant on asking any questions and not looking like I'm crazy for asking a specific question. If like, if I misinterpreted what a professor said or anything like that. Uh, So I'm really happy that Ross is going, uh, the approach that it's taking on diversifying the university as a whole. Uh, congratulations to Dr. Na- I mean, Dr. Uh, Navaretti for her position that she has. Uh, and I'm really appreciative of her for that position as well. But yeah, I, I'm really appreciative of Ross for diversifying the entire uh, Ross University to which eventually I feel like Ross will probably be an example for trying to uh, show schools of how uh, diversify a school program as a whole. 
No, it can be definitely. I, I hope so too. I hope, I mean, we're headed in that direction. And Dr. Raglan, I have to ask any advice for incoming students that are navigating some of the, the challenges that we've had or, and that you've seen, uh, or maybe that you've had, uh, any advice? Yes, of course. So I think you've all alluded to the fact of how important mentorship is. And I think that's one that always um, provides not even just uh, someone to talk about the field with, but just someone to talk about life with. Because some challenges that you have as a person of color is not maybe some of the other challenges other people have. And so we, we have a little bit of some different unique disparities that we see, you know, early on sometimes. And so I think mentorship is one, um, you know, never be afraid to ask a question, right? Um, know that your, your, your input is valuable, invaluable too. And also, um, if you're interested, you know, in, in Ross and what Ross can offer, there are, are many opportunities and ways that you can get in contact with any one of us, but also um, even going to some of our um, ad admission, you know, um, events that are around the, the country and even some online content. And so I do think that, um, you know, if you're facing a challenge and you just want someone to talk to about the field, how to get into the field, um, you know, if you can make it because you can, and we're evidence of that. Uh, also, and just, just remember that, you know, this is part of the journey and that, yeah, there will be challenges, but also, um, also as a whole, you know, the, the importance of having a, a, a environment that is really, um, diversified and this is what one of the components of Ross is and and I think that's helpful in preparing you for the future and seeing what what you'll be encountering you know you we're, we're going to be you know enabling uh, this diverse structure this this um, you know equitable future for students and future veterinarians and that's the same thing that we want to impart into others um, from now and into the journey of their career definitely thank you I know get it like I said I think we've all echoed it getting to this point is definitely challenging and adding on the fact uh, to being a person of color has its own challenges in itself to get to this point. Um, and great advice to you, ask questions. And I always say, put your hands on everything. So even if you think you're gonna get that no, go out and, and reach for it. So it looks like we're getting towards the end of things. Is there any last minute words of advice from anybody or comments that anybody wants to put out there? And I um, did, go ahead, Khadija. Oh yeah, so I would just like to say that um, diversity is just something that everyone can benefit from. You may be in academia, but it makes you more relatable to your peers as well. Um, and if you're in your, your professional career, it makes you more relatable to your clients and it puts you in a position to understand them a little bit better as, and what they're going through. So um, it's really important um, for students to have a sense of the community. So I just wanted to emphasize that um, our US and NABB is receptive to anyone who wants to get more information, undergrads, um, students in between, um schools um yeah so you can email us um we also have a facebook account and an instagram um yeah and we'll be linking those at the end of the presentation as well yeah and i definitely think ross gives us a unique opportunity to kind of live breathe diversity we come to another country out here in St. Kitts and it's a different culture and you definitely have to learn to adapt. And I know a phrase that I think we've all heard time and time again is that Rossi resiliency. And I mean, Ross students are definitely some of the most resilient out there. Yes, <laughs> that's true. It's very true. <laughs> Yes. And then add COVID on top of it and <laughs> just kind of adds an extra layer there. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Well, we want to thank you all for joining us today. 
Uh, if you're a prospective student interested in learning more about ROSVET, you can find a link pinned to this live stream where you can also request more information about the DVM program. Otherwise, any other students who are interested in learning more about SNABV, you can reach out to us on Instagram at RUSVM underscore SNABV. And thank you to our guests as well as Dr. Navaretti and Dr. Raglan for joining us. Great insight and uh, amazing advice. It's definitely much appreciated. And that concludes our live stream. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.